The best way to jumpstart on UML class diagram is to use provided template. If you search for available templates, Microsoft Visio provides two templates for UML class diagrams. One is just simple UML class template, and second one is UML class with interfaces. Depending what you're trying to build, you can choose either available template. To start building class diagram, all you need to do is to bring the stencil and start populating the members of the class. So what is UML class diagram and why do we need it? UML class diagram is intended to provide a blueprint for entire system design. This blueprint works very well, regardless of which programming language you use to build your system. And the reason it works so extremely well is because UML class diagram shows what types of objects you will be building. It shows objects, properties, and methods, as well as static relationships between objects. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka, and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. Most of my career, I worked as a consultant, helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills, which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in the community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. To start editing class in Microsoft Visio, all you need to do is click on the class name. In this video, we will be building UML class diagram for online e-commerce store. Let's look at the typical classes we might need for this type of diagram. There is minimum of two classes we might need. First one is customer. Customer typically has name, address, phone. We also would like to capture search history of the customer, as well as allow customer to place the order. I would like to pinpoint couple considerations for the customer class. Customer always has name, address, and phone. And typically, this is a single one-to-one -one relationship between customer and these types of attributes. Search history done by the customer on online e-commerce website typically represents multiple items. I highlighted first four items on the list as blue, indicating that they are the attributes of the class versus placing order, which is something that is done by the customer as an action. This leads us to very important consideration, as each class can contain properties, which represent data attributes of the class, as well as methods, which represent behaviors of what class can do. Both properties and methods are members of the class, but you use above the line area in the class to show properties, and you use below the line area in the class to show methods. For example, to add customer name as an attribute, you just double click on the member name and type in name and then define what type of attribute it is going to be. In our case, it is string. Then you hit enter. To insert address, we would need additional space above the line. To get it, we need to right mouse click on the name, which is an existing attribute, and say we're trying to insert member after. Once the placeholder for the new attribute was added, we can just edit it and add address as another attribute. Because search history can contain more than one item, we will come back to define the type of data attribute that the search history will represent. Methods for the class defined in very similar way. All you need to do is to double click on the existing method and type in the actual name for the method. If you need to add additional methods, you can right click and say insert member after. To define e-commerce order class, we need to bring in the new class object and define properties and methods for the class. Couple important considerations here. Based on the limitations of programming languages, there cannot be any spaces in between the words of the attribute name or method name. So you see there are no spaces in between search history and place order. Another important consideration, class doesn't have to have both properties and methods. It can only contain properties, like in case of order. So if we don't have any methods, we can just remove this element. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to online training for everyone. State-of-the-art skills, tips, Tricks and techniques we share with you here on online training for everyone will help you today and in the future. We use scientifically proven methodology to create videos that will help you learn faster and retain more materials. When you click the subscribe button now, you will become connected 
and will be the first one to receive automatic notifications when new video is released. In addition to defining properties and methods, UML class diagram also helps you define relationships between classes. There are many types of relationships you can define in two main categories. First, you need to define plurality between objects. In this category, you define if a relationship is one-to-one -one or one-to-many. In general relationship category, you have at least five things to consider. For example, there is an association type relationship between customer and order. One customer can place many orders. To depict it on the diagram, you need to bring an association stencil and connect it between two objects. We can select the object and align them to make sure this is a straight line. The actual name of one-to-many relationship in UML is multiplicity relationship. By default, association line does not show multiplicity. To enable multiplicity, you need to select the line, do a right mouse click, and select show multiplicity. Typically, you show multiplicity by showing one next to the customer and showing many next to the order and then deleting items that you don't need. Currently, this line shows association type relationship between customer and orders and also shows one-to-many relationship between customer and order because one customer can submit multiple orders. Generalization or inheritance relationship typically shows us is a relationship between child class and the parent class. Typically, this type of relationship is ideal to show reusable elements in the class diagram because it shows that the child class inherits the common functionality defined in the parent class. For example, in the real world, there might be at least two types of customers, business customer and individual consumer customer. Both of these types of customers might inherit all the attributes and methods from the generic customer object. And in addition to this, they might have their own properties and methods specific to their function. For example, business customers may be approved to buy with purchase orders. And this is why it's important to have credit limits for business customers. They can also place their orders on credit versus consumers who only are able to place orders using credit card. To show generalization type relationship in the class diagram, we need to use generalization stencil. Once we bring it into the picture, we can connect it to the objects and make sure the relationship is established. Once we've established relationship for one object, we can copy and paste the relationship stencil, or we can bring in the new one. Aggregation type relationship is created when one class is formed as a collection of other classes. For example, to represent search history for the customer, you might consider creating a dedicated class. It will be connected with the customer class through the search history ID, and it will contain the collection of the searched items. You might also have at least two methods if customer was looking for the particular item. To represent aggregation type relationship in the class diagram, you need to use aggregation stencil. Once you bring it to the diagram, you can connect it to the right object. You can also select the object and use keyboard arrow keys to move the object to get to the straight line in your connection. Composition relationship is a variation of aggregation relationship. Composition typically illustrates that a strong life cycle is present between the classes. Relationship between customer and search history items could be represented either by aggregation or by composition. If you feel that composition should be used, you can either bring in a new stencil or you can just right mouse click on the existing relationship and change the connector type. You can do it by selecting a composition type relationship instead of aggregation. Realization relationship is typically used when one entity, typically an interface, defines a set of functionalities as a contract for another entity, which is typically just a regular class. In this relationship, class typically realizes the contract by implementing all the functionalities defined in the interface. For example, we might define an interface that will be called order processor. This interface will have two methods, validate payment and validate items availability. We might also consider defining two classes that will realize this interface, business order processor and consumer order processor. Business order processor class will realize all the methods of the interface and implement them, as well as it will implement one additional business order specific methods, which is validate credit limit. Very similar situation we will do with consumer order processor. Consumer order processor will realize all the methods and implement all of them for order processor interface, as well as consumer specific method, which is validate credit card. 
To show realization relationship between classes and interface, we can use realization stencil. Once you bring it into the diagram, you can connect it to the relevant objects. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this, and we'll make sure that you get it in the future. Microsoft Visio provides excellent features to make your diagram look professional. For example, you can add your logo into the diagram and place it in any corner where you would like. You can also use align features of Visio to align the objects on the diagram. For example, the relationship between interfaces and classes doesn't look very straight. So we can zoom in into this area, we can move interface a little bit up, and then we can look at the lines to see how can we align these lines. And the best way to align the lines might be to align the objects themselves. To do that, we can select the objects, click align, and we can align middle. And you see by aligning the objects, it aligned the lines as well. We can also use design features of Microsoft Visio to make the diagram look very professional. To do that, let's navigate to the Design tab on the ribbon, and then there are a lot of different themes available. All you need to do is switch between the themes to see which one fits what you're trying to accomplish the best. For example, I like this theme. It's called Linear. I'm going to select it. I can also select different variants that are available for this theme, which will bring in different variants for the given theme. You can also choose different colors within the variant. For example, if you like the variant, if you'd like how it looks, you can just play with the colors. You can also change the background for the diagram. You can either choose one of the available backgrounds that matches the theme, or you can bring in your own image that you think might be a good fit. Once you're done with the design, you can save diagram as PDF file. This is only one of the available options, and it allows you to distribute the diagram for many people that may not have Visio. Once you save it as PDF, Visio automatically brings up the Adobe PDF Viewer and allows you to preview the diagram. And if you're using Microsoft Teams to collaborate with other people on your project, you can bring in Visio file by navigating to the Files tab in your channel, uploading VSDX file, and once file is in place, you can show the file as a separate tab if this information is important for every team member. To do that, you just need to click the plus button, select Microsoft Visio app, and pick the file. Now this file is available for everybody to view. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.